Check one, two. Check. Mic check. Hello, and thank you for joining me. My name is Miguel Coronado. This is a daily study group. It's Super Bowl Sunday, and I just said that for no reason. Um, today I said we'd do a paint over and critique. So it's technically not a study so much as I'm going to just give feedback and critique to other people. Um, I'm going to pull the critiques and the pieces from the Crimson Daggers forum under the Seeking Critiques and Paint Overs section. So if you don't know where that is, I'll show you. It's, uh, where is it? Oh, it's not showing up. Here we go. It's this... Uh, Seeking Critiques and Paint Over section. And you just click on here and it's got all kinds of people looking for some feedback and help. So I want to just pick out some people. I uh, try and pick out whoever I can really give the best technical advice to. And some of the ground rules. <laughs> I don't critique on design unless it's specifically requested. I try and stick with the fundamentals like value, anatomy, proportion, perspective, color, um, that kind of stuff, composition. Anything that's real basic, I focus on. Um, I'm a freelance illustrator and uh, I'm, you know, just getting going just the re like the rest of y'all. So this is more like a peer review. Um, you know, take everything I say how you will. Um, and also, the, the more information you can write in your forum post, the better it'll be for anyone to help critique you. So let's get over here. Um, I'm going to be doing one for Blazing Brain, but I'm also going to go ahead and uh, just kind of click through and see some other pieces here. Hmm. Yeah, so here we go. Um, and I, I'm picking these by the uh, 
by the best uh, by the best um, advice I think it can give, um, but kind of just pulling them out as I go. Okay, I can go, I'll do this one too, by Zombie Chinchilla. Now all the names, if I mess up your username, I'm sorry, but, um, you know, whatever, it's not your real name. Unless it is Zombie Chinchilla, in which case I apologize for your parents. Um, okay. So we're going to start with Blazing Brain, and they say, these are some drawing studies, they're fast doing just to practice the fundamentals. Um, with some favorite artists of mine, Mike Butkus, Butkus, love his sketching style, and Greg Capullo, Jim Lee, seeking some crits from you guys. Okay. <coughs> mm. That's, um, just straight up, uh, real quick, Blazing Brain, if you're watching this later. Uh, I don't exactly know what kind of critique you're seeking. Like, is there certain advice? But I, th I think I'll, I can get this right for you. So, I'm going to open up a new document. I'm just going to paste your drawings in. So it says, these are some drawing studies. They are... Let me, let me try and translate this. Um, and this is just because I feel like they might not speak English as the first language. And if you do speak English first language, maybe t type this real fast. But and if you didn't, and you know, I'm sorry if I'm just accidentally calling you on your typing fundamentals. Um, these are some drawing studies. They're just fast practice for the fundamentals. And the, he's studying art from his favorite artists. He loves their sketching style. Um, and then the artists are Mike. Butkus, Butkus, Greg Capolo, and Jim Lee. Those are the artists, and it says seeking some critiques. Um, so the best way to do this for me is to find the original artwork and compare it, because he's doing kind of, you think of it like a master copy. Um, so technically it's not, it's not so much practicing fundamentals as it is practicing um, kind of a, what do you call it? Uh, not not just copying, but um, space relationship, right? So here's the picture um, by Greg Capullo of Scarecrow, and uh, it's a black and white image. I believe this is the original. Let me just double check real quick. Comic appreciation. This looks like it. I'm gonna copy that, and uh, what we'll do is we'll compare it to the copied image. This will be how we kind of evaluate this one because uh, it's not really fundamental um, and I say that because it's not you're kind of copying the style of someone else purposefully. I mean so it's you're kind of studying how they do the pencil strokes and how they kind of create the marks in the paper which is a valid thing to practice. It's not like you need to you know, there's no right or wrong, really, but, um, let me see if there's a higher res. I think the, I think this is, uh, bigger. Let me see. Click to view the original size. Oh, the original size is much bigger. Let me just try and put that in, though. So, we're going to look at this in terms of, like, space relationship and kind of, like, see if you nailed the proportions of your drawing, right? Um, I think to most people, when they think of fundamentals, they're kind of thinking of like, um, like if you're going to practice fundamentals and you're going to relate it to like this Batman stuff, then you'd want to like look up a picture of burlap and do a study of burlap. And then you look up a picture of a suit and do a study of a suit, and um, you know, you kind of get the drift. You can look up a picture of a rope, 
do a study of the rope, right? This one won't be so much a pain over as a, just kind of a critique, because <clears throat> there's not as much. It's called line art, so it's a little, it's going to be a little harder. Um, so here, let me just do this. I'll just pull, pull the drawing over the drawing, and we'll see how it works out. I know you drew this on pencil and paper, so it's not entirely the same. So, like, alrighty, there's a... I'm going to line up the heads. That might be the easiest way to do this. Because there's some things that are kind of wonky. Um, and they're probably little things, but because they all add up, they make it... They make it bigger. Um, they make bigger issues because, like, there are a bunch of little things that are happening. Let me open up the canvas a bit more. Oh, and there's Batman. So let me cover up Batman, too, because we don't want to have him distracting us. I couldn't, I mean, like, just now I Google searched really fast, and I didn't really find the other images. That's why I'm not doing the Batman piece. Uh, the Scarecrow is the first one that came up when I was searching, so. Okay, so. Let me see if there's anyone in here real quick. This just helped me until I can understand how this is working. Okay, no one's here yet. It's great. Okay. So if you're watching this later, this is how it works. Um. Right now, the original, the head is larger in proportion to the overall, like the entire body. So your guy's head would need to be slightly larger. And because the head's larger, there's a bunch of smaller features that'll be had to be fixed, right? Because the eye is going to be up here now. Maybe it's a little bit lower. And this eye is going to be up here. And even that's a little off from what I'm doing. Because I'm not, not kind of going slowly about it. But uh, the, main, the main thing to take away from copying like this would be to... Uh, like the main thing to focus on is just like the relationship of all the shapes. Right? Because that'll always work out for you. So like if you're doing a study the relationships of the shapes and if you're doing like a your own drawing to make things look correct you gotta think about how close is the eye from the nose how close is the arm from the head all the proportions right so that's kinda of what I'm talking about mm. the next thing you gotta remember when you're doing like a master copy is that you kinda wanna copy if you're really doing like a master duplication you really want to kind of copy a, uh, what he's done right so if you like the sketching work and the line work of his drawings then you got to copy that line work so like typically when a line is thicker that's the start of the mark and then when it tapers off it becomes the end so like if you want to recreate that that motion, you got to figure out how he's making his lines. Um, I just drew this all in the wrong layer. But that's, that's all right. Let me do that in a new layer. But um, so when you're starting to make these marks, like right here, this uh, let me zoom in a little more. This mark behind his neck, right here, that little bitty mark. That's created by. Pressing and pulling away, right? So like, if you, you have to use like a real pen to do this too, because it's not going to look the same. And then your marks are going to look the same as his marks because he used a pen, and there's little things that happen with the pen and the ink that change up the look of everything. And these little, uh, but anyway, you got to try and take apart how he's done it. Um, these thicker lines are typically because he like went up and down, kind of like. You kind of double back down the line itself. 
and then uh, these really thin little lines are quick. They're just like quick line marks, and he's using that just to kind of give you a sense of texture. So if you're going to go through and copy it, try and mimic the line marks and the the strokes he's making. So like anything that's really thin and light is stuff that he can win and he did real fast. So like he came in here and like just quickly knocked that out. And uh, any of these more dynamic lines, they're like uh, he started and then kind of went out like pressed, pulled away, pressed, pull away. And it's not that he thought about it, it's just that he was going by so fast he would just like kind of nick away at it line by line. Because he drew the drawing itself already, so he already had the character down. And then his inking, you know, he'd go in and not have to worry so much about the uh, Um, the proportions. He's just focusing on the mark making. And that's something that you need to think about. If you like that sketching style, so you got to think about the drawing and work out the drawing first. And then you go back in with a pen and you go back over all that work and you can really pick up uh, that same kind of shape language that it's not going to look exactly the same because you're not him and you don't have his pins and you don't have his you know his hand and everything like that. specific things are going on here that are only specific to him as an artist that but you can try and mimic it and your style will end up looking a lot like his um, Anyway, that's uh, kind of how you got to think about it. So, what you need to do, if you want to go back and do this practice session over again, I, I drew this in the wrong way too. If you really want to go back and do this, a better way of doing it because it's only practice, it's not like, you know, finished piece. And even if it was, it's someone else's style, so you don't really want it to be your own. Let me just kind of, uh, let me turn off, I'm going to turn off your drawing, and I'm going to do my own kind of practice piece of it, right? So, let's say I wanted to, oops, wrong one. Let's say I wanted to draw this guy. So first you take your piece of paper, and you pull up your image and go, okay, I want to draw a scarecrow. And so you start by just with a pencil, just lightly sketch in everything you want. With the pencil, too, you got to match up the, um, the proportions. Do that now, and you can make it as messy as you want because it's just the pencil stage, right? You don't need it to be um, perfect right now. Because if you like that style, you gotta like work. You gotta, this is all inking, right? So you can't just you can't nail that look down with the pencils. Because lots of this line work, this the weight variation in the line work is from the pen or the brush that he used. Okay. So or if he didn't ink this, it's from the guy who inked it. It's from his pen or brush, which might be an entirely different thing to consider. If, I'm assuming that the artist inked it. I don't really know the artist. Um, but if it's, uh, if it's his drawing and his ink work, then, you know, he probably came in here, drew the basic shapes of the character, because he already knew, if he's the inker, he knows the kind of decisions he wants to make. If he's not the inker, he has to, like, give as much detail as possible so that the inker guy doesn't, like, wreck his work, you know? Um... Like this is even just like so he probably just blocked it in lightly, just so he could kind of get an idea of where he wants to put things later. Mm 
the other thing too, this is like the design from the movie, the Batman Begins movie, where it's the scarecrow with the business suit and he's got the uh, noose around his neck. So, if you wanted to really do a practice, you could look up a movie still that has the scarecrow and uh, draw the scarecrow from that movie still, because that's basically what he was doing. He's doing his own stylized version of that same character. Um, So this is a little off still. So like if it was pencil and paper, you'd need to really come back here and start like start erasing the stuff you don't want and try and fixing it. Uh, try to start fixing it. You know, clean it up a little bit. All right. Um, put in the landmarks, like that big seam right here. That's like something you got to really think about. Um, this opening here in the head that has like this, the straw coming out. It might be his hair, I don't know. Um, you just sit here and you got to like correct it, correct the pencils before you do the ink. Because when you start doing the ink, you only have one shot, and that's it. Then you kind of like, if you screw up, then your drawing's kind of messed up. You got to like white it out. You either white it out, or you got to scan it and fix it in the computer. But uh, you know, it's not the same as just nailing it with the inks, right? So you sit here and you do your pencil and you fix it and you like make it look exactly how you want it. You know, you take your time. Don't try and rush it because one thing you said in your your post with this, this you said they're fast to practice fundamentals, and that's kind of like a contradictory statement because you can't practice fast. You got to practice slowly. If you don't practice slowly, you gotta do repetition, right? So one way or another, you're gonna spend a lot of time working. Either you're gonna draw a bunch of little things real quick, or you're gonna stay on one thing and spend a long time on it. And it'd be better if you spayed, uh, spayed, <laughs> spayed your garden. It'd be better if you stayed on the drawing a lot longer and really nailed it. Because then, you would start to understand more. Like right now, I, I can see like the, this eye, the corner of the eye, and the corner of this shape here in the head are kind of like parallel to each other. So I got to kind of remember that when I'm drawing it right here. And like the eye is a slightly different angle right now. Um, let me see. But like this, think of this as my pencil phase. So like, I'm really going to just sit here and work it out. I'm not going to rush through it. I'm not going to um, go straight into ink right away. I really want to like make this look exactly the way I want it. And then we'll worry about inks. But just also remember too, if you were to watch him draw this, he probably wasn't as tight with his pencil drawing because if he was the one that inked it, he might save himself some time and just finish it in the inking stage. And that's a lot of artists do that. They do a really loose drawing in pencils and then they know that they're gonna have to go through and ink the whole thing again. So they don't really they don't really make it super finished because they're gonna to have to already go back over it later. So it's like for them it saves time. They just they kinda of trust that the ink's gonna do things they don't expect and they're gonna use those unexpected marks that the ink makes to help the piece. Uh, so this right here, like this part, uh, well, let me get a different color for that. Let's 
still didn't work out. Here we go. I'm going to make this uh, red. So this part of the head right there, you see how thin this corner of the face is next to the eye? It's like super thin. But on my drawing, it's pretty thick. So that's something I need to like take into consideration, and I got to go back here, and I got to fix that. So I go, okay, well that's not as I need to make this a lot thinner. And because I made that thinner, I got to kind of reshape the head right here. And because I kind of know what's going on, I'm going to actually have to carve the eye out more this way. And This will be kind of closer, right? So that's where you gotta take your time, and then when something looks off, and they're little things, not they're not like major things, right? When those little things look off, you gotta go back and double check what it is you're doing. So this area right here, uh, let me get, switch the color again. This area right here in the face, it's really got a lot going on. So. I think the best thing would be to go in and really take your time and actually mark it out because you're doing this like a study. So for you, you would want to really observe exactly what's going on in there and do it yourself. But uh, the artist himself probably didn't spend too much time on this area. He probably just knew that if he made these marks a certain way, it was going to look like a mess of uh, twine and burlap and he kind of just wants that messy twisted look right so that's just something to remember so right now to his head the head on the actual drawing looks a lot wider than mine so for the sake of saving time I'm going to just transform it because I am in Photoshop You can kind of see how it compares now. Um, see how mine was off? Like, it's way up there. That's pretty close um, as far as the size goes, but like, there's still little things off, right? Um, you come back here, you do like where the, the hole is. Hole. This is all, remember, if you're doing this in pencil, then this is all just pencil right now. And uh, you're just taking your time. And really working out, instead of doing, like, you can't transform it, but you can erase. So you sit there and erase and fix your lines. and Make sure that everything matches up as best you can, because when you start doing the inking, the inking stage is going to be kind of everywhere because there's going to be things that happen when you ink that didn't happen with this artist so it's going to be a hit or miss you know unless you're using the exact same pen or the exact same brush and even then it's not going to match up but the closer you get to what he was using the closer your image will look but uh just you know that's something to keep in mind because The thing to keep in mind is that your your art, your image is not going to look like his image, even if you follow every single step to a T. Um, it's one of those things too. If you like how he makes his marks, if you like how he draws, then you kind of gotta you kind of have to look up how uh, he does his work. If you can find it somewhere, like a video of him drawing or a uh, step-by-step -step process picture anyway so let's move on to the next step so now you have your pencil marks the next step would be and I made a new layer but since you're you'd be working uh, 
on paper, you would just start drawing in. You take your your pen, and you'd have to like get yourself ready because every mark you make is going to be the you know the final mark kind of thing. Um, I'm going to start here on the outside because there's this big thick dark line, and if I do a little mistake, I could fix it by just shading in more. So now you got to come in here and like okay, and try and study how he did it. So he probably came in and went kind of like this like. I don't know why this made a sound effect. <laughs> you probably came in and like, cull it in, cull it in, came up, cull it in, cull it in, cull it in. And then these thinner lines, those are quick marks. So, we're going to try and mimic that a little bit. And, uh, all these marks, you're gonna have to like. You're gonna really want to turn the paper, and uh, you know, get the right angle for each stroke. You don't have an undo button like I do, because I'm just gonna use the undo button if I mess up. Uh, but basically, lots of the stuff are just quick marks. Um, you gotta make sure you don't run your hand over the area that you just drew too, because of ink that'll smear. Anyway, this would be a better way, I think. If you're gonna do a, a, a practice like this, if you're gonna kind of like follow someone else's process, um, I think. There's a lot of people that are going to want to hear me say things like, you shouldn't copy comic art, you should copy, like like I said, study burlap, study your actual rope, do the movie still, the actual uh, scarecrow design, because it's made of real materials. Um, but, I mean, if you are going to do this and study this drawing, you should just know that uh, there's a way that you could break it down and do it better. You'll get more out of it if you just take your time. You know, ink, when this inking stuff, the last of this is like quick lines. So that's the one thing you have to remember. Excuse me, I don't know if you heard that in the mic, but there's a weird noise came out of me. Um, yeah. You feel it? A little bit? Well, it's on medium, you turn it higher. Um, Sorry. But anyway, there's a... So I guess for everyone out there that's waiting for me to say that, like, that thing that, you know, if you really want to study fundamentals, you shouldn't copy from a comic art. Because technically you're not studying fundamentals. You're studying someone's process. And uh, when you're studying for someone else, you're studying how they interpreted the fundamentals, right? So this guy probably knows anatomy, and he probably took a look at Cillian Murphy from the movie Batman Beyond. Batman Beyond. <laughs> Batman Begins. And he probably drew different versions of this character until he finalized his stylized look that he could recreate for the comic. But what he didn't do is look at someone else's drawing and draw from it. He drew from the actual character in the movie itself. So, the best way, if you really want to do fundamentals, is not to work from another artist. But, if you're going to study process, you're going to study how someone works on their style. Um, really break it down and figure out exactly how they did it. Because all this ink work is real particular. Real particular to like if you, if anyone really likes to ink illustrations like comic inking or traditional like ink drawings like it's an entire it's an entire um, medium unto itself where there's people that could just do really great work in ink black and white ink and that's all they do it's something you can master um, and it takes a long while to do it. But uh, these quick, quick mark making, 
and you got to understand that when you're doing it with a, a pin or a brush, you're going to make mistakes, but you got to work with them. You got to like, you got to enjoy the randomness to it because it's just going to happen. It's going to happen more so in real media than it would ever on this digital platform. So you're not going to see the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Sometimes the line's just thicker, sometimes it isn't. And I could do something like on the computer to mimic that. I could do something like shape dynamics. And I could do a size jitter. And I could kind of make my pin jitter in size a little bit. And that'll kind of mimic it slightly. It'll give it more of a I think you can see it. Maybe like 20, 30, 26 percent. Yeah, there's a slight more ink like look to it now. Anyway, this is something you really need to uh, do traditionally and uh, just understand that that's just going to be how it is. Like, the ink's going to do things it wants to do, and you're not going to be able to control it. But if you are working digitally, and you want to try and mimic that randomness, turn on your size jitter and uh, see like that line right there on the eye, sorry I just stopped my train of thought, but that line is so thin and it's right there in the eye area that it had to be a quick mark or else the ink might have, might have bled, right? So like quick dot, right? And then like there's these little bitty lines next to the eye that's just like this like quick line making uh, and that's all that is it's just, that's the thin stuff's really fast and the the thicker stuff is when you kind of linger on the paper longer and kind of pull away but you can kind of if you really wanted to you can look through all these strokes and pick out what came first because every time you push and pull it makes a tapered mark so knowing that you can know that these marks on the jacket were like uh, made like that real quick. Just pull, pull. See, I'm not even getting an angle right, but it's okay because um, it's not going to look exactly like him. I'm just tracing the lines real quick just because I want. <coughs> I wanted to see exactly if uh, it could kind of match that up. It doesn't work exactly. It's not worth tracing it. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway. But you can go through and pick out exactly what lines came first. Um, um, he did a bunch of little textures too. So like in certain areas, it's just these little lines he made. Like line, line, line. And a few little like he just kind of like crisscrossed some lines and did some cross hatching, but really subtle. So he did a cross hatch like right here to kind of show you that this is all supposed to be burlap. Because he does it again over here. Right? See how the head? Now his just looks a little lighter than mine, but you know you get the idea. And then uh, this line. A lot thinner than the outline of the character itself, and uh, that he comes in here and just makes some quick dashes for the the stitching, and then he breaks. So he does this first line, and then he goes in here and he breaks it up with these little mini lines, and those little lines represent the texture of the fabric of the burlap, right? See, I did something already where I made the line on my head go all the way up. But the, these hairs, if you can see from here, the hairs are uh, clearly the white overlaps, which means I didn't correctly do that. So I, I can come back in and erase it out to make it match, but that's something that he couldn't do. 
I mean, he could do it with white out, but like, he, I mean, he had the drawing down, so he probably knew, okay, I just want this to be overlapping, so I gotta draw that first, and then I'll put the background stuff after it, you know, some quick marks. Lots of little textures and things. It's not exact, but it kind of looks like that style, right? So if I turn off the pencil layer, you can see how the mark making will look without any of the lighter stuff. Anyway, like I said, this you need to do this in pencil and pen. So like me doing it digitally won't. It's not the same. Um, yeah, so I think I'm going to go ahead and stop right there on this one. Uh, I think you get the drift. Catch the drift. Um, it's, um, there's a better way of, of studying it and looking at the process like that. Okay, I'm not gonna really save anything out because uh, I don't think it's really much to show you. Like, there's not like a before and after. It was more of just a talk about what you can do. So I'm gonna close this, <coughs> and I'll just comment and tell you that I um, I live streamed a thing for you, a critique or a kind of feedback. Now, zombie chinchilla. Hello everyone, I did a portrait of Sakura for Naruto a few weeks ago. Despite the clear flaws, I'm actually pretty happy with it. So I'd like everyone to tear it apart for me. Okay. Um, uh, I, my quick advice, just for like posting this, like, tell us what flaws you recognize. That way we don't beat the dead horse kind of thing. Like, let us know exactly what... Let's go ahead and get into this now. Okay. There's a few things already. Um, <clears throat> a few things that are going on. So, uh, in most of the pieces I critique, one thing that always happens is people have like pure, oops. They have like pure black somewhere in the piece and that always kills the piece. Or they have pure white. And... This piece happens to have neither pure black or pure white, but it kind of does the opposite of that. It has all these mid-tones, and nothing goes beyond, uh, nothing goes beyond like a 50%, maybe that blue. That blue goes down to like 70%. Uh, Blue is like 70. I'm thinking of this in terms of like markers. Like if you have a grayscale marker, like a 70% uh, gray is almost black, right? Because it's closer to 100% would be black. So right now you're at around 70, which means like you don't go too close to the darkest dark, and the lightest you go in the entire piece is 20%. Okay, so that's what you're, something you're doing to yourself overall. You could push the values. In this case, you could really push the values and make it look more three-dimensional because I feel like you're trying to make a realistic Sakura picture. So, in order to really do this right, though, I got to look up a picture of Sakura from Naruto, and we'll kind of do a compare and contrast, right? So here's the character. She's all anime. Um, this is from the comic. I'm going to go ahead and pull the image from the comic, only because I really like the comic. Ah, crap, I just gave myself a spoiler. I haven't read this far. I'm not going to say what it was, in case you're not where I am. I just spoiled something between the characters. Anyway, whatever. 
it just like, well, it just said, I love you, Naruto, and unless he's having like a fantasy sequence, I just realized the characters get together eventually, which is like something we've been talking about since the beginning of the series. Okay, so here's the manga, here's the real character, or like the realistic version. We're going to use that as a, a little bit of a guide. And um, so the big first critique was that you're missing your dark darks and you're missing your light lights. Uh, the darkest parts of your image only go to like 70%, which happens to be this blue on the bandana. There's a little bit here near the mouth that's about the same. It doesn't go, it doesn't go any darker. So um, the next thing you've got is... Um, your lighting isn't very clear because you have the lighting let me get the my my red out you've got the lighting here on the face and here so it makes me think the lighting is coming in from this direction but the hair doesn't have any lighting on it neither does this headband so you've got some things that are fighting against what you're trying to do. Because if the hair, let me see, let me take a lighter pink. If you had a lighter pink right here, you would already, it already kind of helps out your image, right? Because it's kind of reinforcing the fact that the light's coming in from this direction. And then the band, the headband would need to be lighter too right there because that's where the light's coming in okay so right there that's going to add in a little bit you kind of got a story going on because she's kind of beaten she's got like this blood coming from her mouth so like she got out of a fight um, here's the deal so if you're doing a realistic image and you got someone injured you're going to have to add in some more elements. Like when someone gets hit in the mouth, you're going to have to end up giving them like a fat lip. So I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just, we're going to ignore the fact that she's bleeding and just worry about the portrait. Um, and also I'm going to do this. I'm going to flip the portrait to the other side to get another good look at how everything is. And we'll, we'll start up. If you look at the uh, the original manga drawing, we're not going to match it exactly because I know you're trying to go for a realistic image. But if you look at the original character, she's got a really small nose and a small mouth, and uh, her eyebrows are a lot thinner. So you got to add in those little bits of the features. So let's just let me start. This might take a little bit just to kind of do everything I need to do. But um, right now we're just going to worry about the face of the girl. That's about it. Um, also, whenever you're drawing any kind of female character, you need to make sure you soften all the features or they're going to turn out looking mannish. Um, the eye, too. So right now the eye is not exactly where it needs to be. So I'm just going to do a bunch of little things and then uh, I'm going to try and tell you everything I do at the same time. But Okay, so you, when you go really dark near the eye like that, it, you're telling us like the darker I go near the eyes, that's you telling us that this part of her head goes deeper in, right? So you're giving her like this weird pronounced brow. You can't do that because it makes her look like a caveman, you know, like that really pronounced forehead. So we're going to soften all this up and we're going to make the other eye uh, bigger because right now it, it's also not on the same plane. I'm just going to kind of erase the eye for now. 
We're going to make her nose a lot smaller. Give her a virtual Photoshop nose job. Okay. And then same with this nostril here. And it's really hard. When you really draw the nostril pronounced on a girl, it really makes them look more like a man for some reason. It just does. Like, like if you don't nail it entirely, you get this uncanny valley effect where they start looking like, oh, they look kind of strange. Because they look really close to being human, but they're not quite human. So it's like whenever you see the creepy Japanese robots that look like real people, kind of. I'm going to move the mouth. Um... I'm not going to move the mouth, I'm just going to paint over. Right now her chin also is really long. She's got like a long face. She's looking a little bit like a dude. That's the main thing. And you might know girls will look kind of like this. But right now they don't, she doesn't look like the character. Because the character's got a really small chin, small mouth, small nose. And that's kind of a convention with all the anime characters. But we want to try and keep that in. Let's keep a uh, move the eye down a bit. See how our forehead is a little longer here too. The hairline to the brows is longer. And if you've read the comic, she's self-conscious about her forehead, and that's like a big thing in the comic. That she's thinks she looks ugly. She doesn't like the way she looks. Um, so that's something that you can actually think about. Don't give her a huge forehead, but you know, like that character thinks that she has a big forehead. I'm just going to adjust the eyes a bit. i got to do a bunch of, a bunch of things now. Now that I move the eye, i got to really kind of patch, do some patchwork. Remember, her eyebrow doesn't go this far back. I'm going to erase that a bit, too. I'm just going to erase her eyebrow. And uh, she has pink hair. I think her eyebrows are pink, too. I'll double check that, though. Right now, her nose is just completely off, so i got to fix that right now. Um, <laughs> sorry, it just looks really monstrous <laughs> right now, and it's all me patching her up. Okay, now we'll go in, we'll put her nose here. Here about, like, right there. And uh, we'll carve in the side of the face a little bit. Well, let me give us some more to work with. I always put in I always put in a darker value when I draw the eyes first and then I I don't know why I just feel more comfortable doing that It's easier for me to put in the darker value and then put in the white of the eyes later I just prefer it for some reason Let me flip it real quick, just to double check everything I'm doing. And remember, so the light's coming in from uh, her. Right now, it's coming from the left of the image, so I've got to make sure everything matches a bit. Um, and you got to soften everything. Actually, this is a terrible brush to use. You should actually use a brush with a soft edge, like this one here. And we got to come in here with the cheekbones, and her cheekbones are still looking pretty prominent too, which is not good for a female character.
take this darker value here to do lips. I gotta really still work out the size of the face. Okay, so I'm going to take the pink from the hair and kind of figure out how I'm going to shape the face some more. Right here. Uh, and also, I don't know what kind of... I think you're trying to give her the haircut from the comic, so the hair would cover over here. So like I said, one of the reasons she had her hair the way she did is because she was self-conscious about her forehead. That's why she covered up the front like that. I'm going to use just the darker value of pink that way when I add on the lighter value it will um, it'll make things come towards you I think you're you drew with the short hair so you drew her after after she cut it off I always kind of flip back and forth the entire time I'm drawing because I always want to make sure I'm not drawing just a freakishly weird person. Oh, the other thing you have is that all the colors are really saturated. Really saturated. So like this green is like not nearly as saturated as I thought it was. But it looks a lot more saturated because you're next to this pink. So the green and the pink are opposites, right? So like they really kind of clash pretty harshly. I'm going to switch to grayscale. But something that happens when I switch to grayscale is you'll start noticing that, like before, I said there's no darks and lights. You can really see that now, how like there's no... There's not actually any like really blacks, black blacks, or like any uh, white whites. It's all like mid-tone. Just, I think it's weird because I feel like the most of the people that ask for critiques that I've done critiques for, they always put in too many darks, too many lights, like really light, light, all like everywhere. Um, I'm just kind of noodling around trying to get the shape of the face right. She's looking pretty Asian. Uh, the way I'm drawing her, but it kind of works out because, I mean, it's a Japanese comic. Although they do make every character look European, so it could, it could fix that though. Depends how you want to go. The shape, face, the eye, eye shape, and that all factor into that. So right now, something that's happening is the cheek is lighter than the chin. So the cheek's coming forward and the chin is going back. So i got to put some light on the cheek, on the chin. So it brings the chin forward. And then a little bit lighter here, because her neck's not so far back that it's like in complete darkness. Let's go ahead and give her a more European look, just because I feel like that's what you're going for.
Um, I'm also going to I'm going to kill the colors. I'm going to um, I'm going to put new layer. The new layer is going to be set to color. And uh, I'm going to just merge that down. Oops. I'm not going to merge it down. I'm going to have that just turned on so that I don't see the. Uh, here we go. That's what we'll do. Okay. This is all merged now. So I've got a black and white version and a color version. I'm going to work in black and white and then I'm going to add the color in just so I can worry about just the values for now. Yeah. We won't spend too much time on this more. I just want to kind of give you an idea of what's going on here that you can change. Uh, her eyes are supposed to be like super blue I think. They might be green. You had them green. I guess her eyes are like a blue green, honestly. They're like a aqua color. The thing is that they um they kind of like actual blue eyes. Actual blue eyes can uh they look green or blue depending on what the person's wearing. So. We'll just keep that in mind. Okay, remember the lighting on the eyes matches the lighting overall. So like if the light's coming from here, her eyes are going to not be that bright, but like you can kind of get an idea how the lightest part of the eye would be here where the light's coming in. And it would kind of fade. Let me flip it again. Just keep adding on. Keep working. Okay. Try and give her not such a scary look. Her eyebrow's pretty high up right now. I'm going to go ahead and lower it a bit. Does she, does she have? Yeah, they give her pink eyebrows. At least in the cartoon they do. I don't know about the comic, but... If they're pink eyebrows, it means they have to kind of be the same value as the hair. Okay. Just kind of keep that now. Her, her chin is looking a little pointy. And I feel like her shoulder could be. Right there. And then she's got this. She wears like this black shirt thing. With this collar that comes up like that. 
I hear the next thing, so I guess we could talk a little bit about, well, we'll talk a little bit about composition later, but um, let me go ahead and just put this in. Eyes are still looking a little wonky to me. They're not exactly the way they should be. Look a little big. Oh, and then the forehead protector. That's like, it's like way wider. It's 11 o'clock, it's been an hour. I need to finish this up. Make the forehead protector a lot wider because those things are supposed to cover the forehead. And we got to add in some other values because right now she just doesn't have like some of the depth that's going on. I'm gonna just get the black. I'm not gonna go all the way black, but I'm gonna. Add in some darker gray to the hair. Let's send that backwards in space. And uh, same with this, the hair in the back, it'll kind of turn a darker color. And it'll lighten up as it gets closer. But then that this whole hairline is going to fade into the background a little bit. Um, I need to lighten the hair on the front. Okay, so the lighter hair on this in the front, and then, uh, you know, like this darker gray represents the hair that's going to the back. Right? A little closer. But then the lightest part should be here, because it's even closer to us. Forehead protector shouldn't get that dark, or we shouldn't get that uh, light because it's pretty dark. In fact, the comic is just drawn straight black on. Uh, it's drawn as black, right? It's not even drawn as like a. <laughs> just drop what I'm saying. Yeah, it's drawn as black. It's not drawn as the actual color value. And this pink of this eyebrow should be closer to that value, and this one should be closer to this value. So the same color, they should kind of be in the same value area, unless they're completely like in a different lighting situation. And she's got like mascara on because your eyebrows are like super. Her eyebrows, her uh, eyelashes are super dark in the comic. So she wears like makeup, even though she's a ninja. It's one of those things.
this other brush out. Just around the, the angle brush I'm using is giving her these weird like shapes I don't want. We don't want to put too much of this mascara on her. We don't want to look too insane by making her people so small. Just flip it and double check. Yeah, see, there's crazy stuff going on with her eyes. And the eyelid too, you gotta kinda incorporate that and I could shade that in better in a second, but Make sure I get this right. Here we go. I'm trying to make sure I get this right. <coughs> Shape of the eye without. It's too big. the brightest part. Here we go. This lip here can make the lips a little fuller. Shadow here. She might look like she has too much makeup on, but you can always tone that down. We we'll put the color in. Flip. You don't want her chin to be so thin. But And your hair, if you have like a hairbrush, it's the brush where it's like a bunch of little dots. Where's mine? Here we go. This will help out. It gets like a bunch of, it's a bunch of little dots. So it creates that look of uh, hair without having to draw individual hairs. We're going for the realistic thing. blend this into the background some more as the hair turns away as the head turns away same thing I'm going to use down here just to give a softer edge to your face and, uh, you get 
some shadow from the hair. chin to look too prominent or else we do what we did before oh I gotta fix the eye a little off but I'm just gonna go ahead and keep going with it for now um, let's see here forehead protector be like up here that might actually be off you got you might want to like take a reference photo of a person wearing a headband it doesn't have to be a forehead protector but just like a headband But uh, yeah, you can take a reference photo of someone wearing like a head head uh, bandana. That's what it is, bandana. Uh, let me just go up here, make a screen layer. I'm just gonna kind of give her eye a little bit of this lighting, just slightly. I'm gonna turn down the layer a lot. Okay. Merge that, and now uh, do a new layer. I'm going to just set it to multiply. I'm going to take this gray, and I'm going to go in here and add some depth to the face, to everything. Add the depth. As it goes away, it gets darker. I'm going to use a softer brush still. Okay, and then likewise, a new layer. Um, we'll do overlay. Oops. Well, o overlay, and then we're going to set it to white. And I'm going to come in here and just kind of. Give her a more lit look. We'll turn that down a lot too. And I'm gonna do it one more time. Also, she had, um, she took care of her hair in the comic. That was something she really liked, was her hair. Um, that's why when she cut it, it was a big deal. She cut her hair in the comic, it was a big deal for her, because it was showing that she was growing up and not worrying about frivolous things like fashion. I'm using these lights, like the little, right now I'm just kind of doing the strokes to define the planes somewhere. Yeah, turn down this a little bit. I'll tone it down with this eraser tool. Anyway, her eyes still are bugging me. They look pretty bad. But, uh, Probably because they're like 
they're missing like the eyelid like that kind of flip it sketchy. Just coming in real quick. Um, needs to be everything needs to be softer though. Like kinda don't do what I'm doing. Take your time to really um, put those marks in, make them look really soft. Let me just move this eye. The other thing you can do is find like a, a reference by using like a, whoops, that mark didn't look good. Find reference by using like a actor or actress specifically. Um, if you're trying to make her look realistic, you can find like an actress that would kind of has her look. That would play her. Huh? <laughs> I can darken the lips a little bit. Oh, we don't want her to look like she has makeup on, so maybe we won't do that. Okay. That's enough. That's enough of this. She's definitely got some harsh lines on the face because of the way I kind of sketched it in, but I kind of get the idea. Uh, she would be played by that actress, like the actress that played uh, Quinn in Glee. Diana Agra. Yeah, that's it. what's her name? Diana Agra. Diana Ag. Um, Diana. Agron. Uh, this actress, she's in Glee. Yeah, she looks like she would play the, like right here. This is like. Except without all the makeup. I do pink hair. She have pink hair? Uh, she has. Oh, yeah, she even kind of has pink hair here. Uh, she didn't really see her. Here we go. It's a little closer. This is more of a natural. Uh, it's probably the closest. Anyway, she looks like she could play that character, the face. <laughs> Short. This should be a good model to use. Short hair. There we go. Something like that. More natural. Just because she's supposed to be a ninja in the comic. You kind of see. Oops. Undo. You see how that the face would work chin, the, the length from the nose to the mouth like matches up. Like if you wanted a model to use, like a reference model, you could find a picture of her. Anyway, I'm not going to save that. But that looks really close. Also, I've been watching a lot of Glee lately. Okay. Let's, uh, let's finish this up, though. Yeah, so if you want to get more accurate, pull up a, find someone that kind of gives that look you want. Uh, that actress works. Um, let me just throw on some color. Super quick, super quick. 
her hair is naturally pink, right? In the comic, she's supposed to have like naturally pink hair because that's how anime works. So we got to kind of mimic what would naturally pink hair look like. So I'd start by putting in red on the hair. I'm using a color layer, 100%. Throwing in red. Actually, let's turn it to a multiply layer. Oops, too dark. Yeah, uh, the multiply layer, and let's just turn it down a bit. Okay, and then uh, start another layer. I'm going to kind of pile on these color layers. You had a green background. So, I'm going to get a green color. Color this in, set this to color. We'll tone it down. We'll tone this down a lot because I don't really. The green is pretty harsh on yours. Tone it down. Um, and now this is the next layer where I'm going to do reddish. And I'm going to turn it to a soft white. I'm going to color her face in. Actually, I won't do... This is a different way of doing it. I should find a skin color. Find like a skin color. Here we go. It's like a peachy skin color. So I'm going to paint in this peachy skin color. On the face. On the elbow. Just very quickly. I mean, you don't do it quickly. I'm doing it quickly because I'm trying to just get offline. Um, but uh, switch to color mode. It's kind of got that peachy look. Let's clean it up just a tad. Okay. And then uh, in the shadow areas, we can, I'm, just, I'm just layering on these things. So I'm going switching it like this is a soft light. Take that same color. Uh, Kind of make a different red. What are you eating? Chicken fries. Chicken fries. Uh, the soft lights not do anything. Switch it to multiply. It looks really garish right now, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it down a lot. Turn this down a lot. It kind of gives those warm tones. Anyway, and we've got to make fix the hair now. Let's do overlay. Overlay might be too much too, but we'll uh, figure it out. So she's supposed to have really soft pink hair. So we'll do that in a second. But first, I'm going to lay in the color with uh, this overlay and like I said you would do this slowly and you would like you know plan it out better this tone this down a lot a little closer um, and then her eyes are like a blue blue screen I mean, it's not working out. Where's my color layer? Anyway, keep keep your layers organized. Don't do it like I'm doing it. And flatten them down once you get some better colors. Take a little bit of white and uh, turn that to a color layer. 
lower it, lower the opacity. So lower it down a little bit more. This is looking really pink here. You could probably change that with a. It needs to have almost more of an orange color. Take the saturation down a bit. Anyway. If something's too dark, we can actually just take a new layer and have it stay a normal and just uh Whatever light comes through her hair would have that pink kind of look to it, because she has pink hair. I'm assuming the pink hair would be something like blonde or white hair, where it's almost actually, it's not actually white, it's like transparent, if you were to look close at a single strand. She's still looking a little crazy, but... And this is now a hot spot, and that's the... That's way too light, so to fix it, we could just dump a new layer with uh, this peach color here, like the skin tone, set to multiply. <coughs> and we'll tone this down a lot with the, the layer transparency. I keep saying tone it down, I mean turn down the layer transparency, if anyone's wondering what I'm talking about. Get the ear, tone that down. Just a little better. She went like I know she's supposed to look pale in the comic, but like you want to you don't want her to look like sickly. Anyway, that's like a super fast way of doing it. Then you'd want to come back in at the very end. You'd flat. Okay, let me flatten all this stuff down. At the very end, you'd want to remember that because she has this green background that she's in you'd want to uh, come in here with uh, because she's in the green background you want to come in here with the green color and like you have to lose edges kind of like let the pink fade out slightly you keep the focal point the sharpest part. You don't worry about like this area down here. Like you don't worry about it fading fading away. A better example of this would be like in David Pose's portraits. If you look at look at one of the Ninja Turtle portraits or look at one of his uh like his Merman, the Merman portrait. And actually, don't look at the eyes. Look at like everywhere else but the face, like on the neck and stuff, or like the shoulders. As it recedes away from the focal point, you'll notice that it really loses lots of the detail, even though it looks super rendered. It's not as rendered as it looks. It's in the fridge. Oh, it's uh, it's right there in the the rack where the knife is. I'm talking to my girlfriend, everybody, if you're wondering what the hell I'm saying. Do you see it? Anyway. Also, uh, whenever the background's green, we'll think of the background as the atmosphere, so some of the shadows on her would have that green. Um, I'm putting this in with a regular 100% normal layer, but I would tone it down. I'd switch it to a color layer, and I'd tone it down a bit. So like, color layer, tone it down to like 30. We can even switch it to like multiply, multiply. 
keep it a little lower. Her eyes still look pretty crazy. She looks pretty insane. She's not look, <laughs> she's not looking like attractive, but uh. Okay. Let's do the before and after. Uh, her eyes should look a little lighter though. I wanted to fix that. Wrong. You called? Oh, is that what's going on? Oh. Wow, no wonder it's cold. It's 65 in the house right now. What we're saying, we're in Austin, Texas. It shouldn't be that cold. Ah, no wonder. So you turn it back up? Okay. Great, you're going to start warming up, and my fingers won't feel like ice while I'm inside. A little better. Let me just put some specular. Specular, specular. Oh, the lips look pretty dark too. I guess I can go back over that real quick. I can soften that up too. <laughs> That's probably you look a little pinker too, but um, let's see. We'll take it, take it to red. Take it to red, and. Uh, Still looks too dark. Looks too dark to me. That saturation does it. Oh, I'm at 40%. No wonder it's not working. I keep coming back to this like sharp angle brush. I really like it because it carves in uh, nicely some of the shapes I want. But also it has these harsh edges I shouldn't be using. Whatever. really want to brutalize Sakura's face the way I have. So the correct the correct way I, would, I should have done this is I should have pulled up a af uh, actress reference photo to kind of show you the example of how to really do that. But, uh, you know, whatever. You get the idea. Her lips look a little too big. Too dark. What are you doing? What's wrong? What are you laughing at? Okay. Anyway. The chin. It's if I if I come in here it looks she looks a little younger. Yeah, she should. <laughs> That's a little closer. Okay, anyway, this is good enough. Oh, crap. It's wrong color. It's good enough to understand kind of like what's going on. Don't do what I just did by adding in the wrong kind of pink, but... 
Oh, we can also lighten this up so the lips could... They need to have the same lighting as the rest of the face. Still looking pretty awful. You trying to say something? Mm -hmm. What is it? The ear is huge. Oh yeah, the ear. Oh yeah, the ear. I never addressed that. I haven't touched that ear actually. That's that's the main reason. Um, let me collapse those layers. The ear should be from the brow to the nose. So. Let's just take the skin color here. I'm just going to draw on the new ear. <coughs> ear should be somewhere there. But with the hair, I feel like kind of cover over a little bit the way your hairstyle is. Maybe not, whatever. Okay. Thank you, Josephine. Didn't notice the ear. There's some weird stuff going on in the face still, like the values here and the shadows. Um, the nose should have, like, because the light's coming in, the nose should have more of a shadow here. And then it kind of goes back here. Like I keep saying, don't use a really sharp brush. When you're doing girl characters, typically try not to. Try to go softer, unless it's supposed to look ugly. That's different. Like a witch or something. Now the eye looks a little too far away. <laughs> eye shoot feels like it should be like right there maybe. Or maybe we should move the other eye back. This eye feels like it should be like, well, whatever. There we go. That's enough. I'm <laughs> coming to get done. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, oops, that's not the image. This is for um, Zombie Chinchilla. I'll uh, post it up. On the forum for everyone watching, I'll do a quick before and after. Oh, four viewers, okay. Um, this is before. This is after. This is before. After. Okay, so I know there's some there's some narrative that was lost. So the first one of the things is she's angry and she's like bleeding. She's like done with the fight. Um, but it really wasn't looking like the character and I think you wanted to go for a super realistic version of the character so I needed to kind of first just focus on making the character look more realistic I mean sorry making the character look more like the real character we can round the nose off and my suggestion to you because I've been watching a ton of Glee lately is to use the actress that plays Quinn Fabray in the show Glee. She's the head cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> she was. But it's actually funny because her character kind of matches Sakura too. Um, let me look her back up real quick. So I think you should use her as a model, reference model for your the face. Um, there's pictures of her with short hair. There's also pictures of her with like blonde hair, but it doesn't really matter because you can change the hair color yourself. Oh, that's it. Diana. Diana Ar Argon. Agron. <coughs> Here we go. So I'm just going to take that image. I'll put this into the uh, the file for you, or on the thread. I'll put this into the thread for you. But uh, if you kind of like look at her compared to Sakura, Sakura, 
She looks like that. Like she looks like the real character, right? If she, if there was a live action movie, she'd play her, right? And uh, yeah. So anyway, I'll put that in the thread so you can kind of use that. But you'd you'd want a three quarter view of her, so that picture really wouldn't work. You'd want uh, something like something like this, but not as you know, not as like a uh, posed. What this here? This might work too. Yeah, that one looked really well too. Let me. Uh, it's a huge image. Okay. Anyway, I'll put these two images in the thread for you. But I think that's what you can. You need reference, right? You need reference. Sakura is like the lead, like she's the lead female character in the story. And uh, we are. I mean. The anime style kind of makes every character look westernized, so judging from your piece, you're trying to go for a westernized, realistic version. So you need to like, um, like pick out like your model, basically, that you're going to work from. Um, and that'll be the best, your best, uh, your best way to go about this. If you're in the chat and you're trying to talk to me, I never actually opened the chat on my uh, computer, so I haven't been able to see anything you've said. I'm really sorry. I kind of forgot to do it. And not that I wanted to specifically not listen to y'all. But, um, hope everyone enjoyed the Super Bowl. Uh, playing Magic and Gathering. <laughs> <laughs> and watching the commercials. Let me just see if anyone was trying to talk to me real quick. And we'll get offline, and I'll post this onto Zombie Chinchilla's thread, and we'll, you know. Hey, Helix. Hey, dude. CJ. Hello. Pedro. Hello. Hello, everybody. <laughs> anyway, I'm about to get offline now. We're actually going to watch more Glee. <laughs> but, um, uh, thanks for joining me. Oh, crap. That commercial just started up on here. Uh, so my ears it's really loud okay anyway everybody thanks for joining me I'll do one more before and after and then I'll post it in the forum if you really want to see um, like an up close picture it'll be a little larger image for you to see so before zombie chinchilla thank you for posting and requesting feedback hope this helps after before after um, I made her eyes blue uh, I know you wanted to make them green, but in reality, they're kind of a turquoisey. They're like this color, right? So we're both right. <laughs> uh, let me go ahead and just, I'll do this. I'll, I'll, I'll put her image into this image on one, on one thing so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. And, uh, that way you have your reference all together for you. Oh, crap. Okay, and uh, where's the other one? Here's another. Just so you can... You've got the model to work from. You've got the comic. Always use the, the reference material. you got to like look at the original drawings. And remember too that the anime came after the the manga, so um, there might be design changes they made in the cartoon that they didn't do right away. Um, now. If you don't watch this video, you're going to see this picture in the thread and think that I used her as reference, but I didn't. So hopefully you watch the video and understand that I'm just putting those in there so you can have easy access to them. Uh, it's a ter terrible looking graphic, whatever. Anyway, here you go. Um, thank you for joining me, everybody. I'm going to get offline. Don't save. This will be in the Crimson Daggers thread. Um, I guess I'll do this too. Put this face in here. 
Um, I'll be back online tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. for the Daily Study Group. We'll be doing a still life. Um, so, still life, Daily Study Group, 9 a.m. tomorrow. Um, also, on Friday at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, we're going to do a Q&A session for the Vampires Project. That's the Vampires Film Project. This drawings I've been working on. But my girlfriend and I will be online talking about the project. I'll be drawing a vampire. It's typical. Um, and we'll talk about crowdfunding. You can ask us how we did the crowdfunding, how we're doing the crowdfunding, how we planned it out, how we gathered the crew, or just how I'm drawing, why I'm drawing, what am I talking about, anything. We're going to keep talking about the Vampires Project, though, the whole time. So anyway, um, and then Sunday we're going to release the pitch video along with the teaser trailer. So you'll be able to watch all that stuff on Sunday. It'll go live online. And uh, hopefully you'll share our project and get people to donate and we'll make a feature film. And then you can see a feature film created by someone from the Crimson Daggers Forum with a team of people he's gathered together with the help of his girlfriend who's been producing. <laughs> so anyway, thank you all for joining. Thank you again. Um, I'm going to put some outro music on and we'll get offline. Let's see here. Show all windows. Oops, not that one. Show all windows. This one. F. Okay. Have a good Super Bowl day.